It's been almost a year since the exciting launch of my new hardtail, the Voodoo Bazango Pro. I unboxed the bike on the channel and it's been a regular staple of the videos and my social media posts ever since. This is the upgraded model of the highly successful Voodoo Bazango that's been one of the most popular bikes in the UK. I've had hundreds of messages from you guys asking about this bike and sharing your experiences. So today I'm hopefully going to answer some of your questions. I'm going to tell you how the bikes performed over the last year and share my honest experiences, likes and dislikes. So I don't want to sit here and go through the whole components chart with you, that wouldn't be the most exciting bike review. But this bike has got good spec for the money, and here are the highlights. The Voodoo Bazango Pro is an aluminium hardtail. It has tubeless ready 29 inch wheels, internal dropper post routing, Shimano Dior 1x12 drivetrain, 130mm rock shocks, 35 gold forks, MT400 hydraulic disc brakes, and it comes in this awesome colorway. So the bike has a healthy spec, all this for less than a thousand pounds. Back when I first got the Bazango Pro, I made a few simple upgrades, tires, a dropper post, grips, etc. But all these are personal preferences, I've not changed anything structural. It still has the same wheels, brakes, group set and things that it originally came with. I wanted to see exactly how this bike performed right off the shelf. And to be honest, I haven't felt the need to upgrade anything like that. Over the last year, I've ridden this bike on a wide variety of trails and in different conditions. I mean, check this out. I think it's fair to say that I've tested this bike pretty thoroughly. So after riding this bike all over the place, I think I've got a pretty good idea of its capabilities. So what do I think? It's clear that 29 inch wheels have become the industry standard. The entire Bazango range has sported 29 inch wheels for a long time. They feature on both the Bazango and the Bazango Pro models. The big wheels make short work of roots and rocks on the trails, and they're great for maintaining speed over tricky sections. They definitely give this bike an extra helping of speed. Unlike some other bikes with 29 inch wheels, I found that this one doesn't lose the ability to corner. It certainly still feels responsive and agile when changing directions. One of the main things people ask is what type of trails can I take this bike on? Well, from my own experiences, I've used it on trail centers up and down the country. But more importantly, I've taken this bike off the beaten track a great number of times. And this is where it's proven itself to be a worthy and capable hardtail. As regular viewers of the channel will know, I like to get the best from my bikes and I like to take them on rowdy trails, in all sorts of conditions. After a year of use and abuse, the bike and all its components have handled the trails with no issues. And as I said, I haven't had to change any parts on this bike. So for something at this price point, I really don't think you can get a more capable all round trail bike. As well as descending, this bike is a capable climber. The 1x12 drivetrain gives you ample power to tackle steep and awkward ascents. This means that longer days in the saddle or routes with mixed terrain are an easy option for riders. If you combine this bike with a dropper post, you can seamlessly transition from descending to climbing with ease. So a lot of viewers have asked me how the bike compares to the previous model Bazango that I had. And of course, the Pro is a huge upgrade. I've taken it on hardtail group rides along with bikes with much larger price tags and the Bazango Pro has been able to keep pace with no problems. If you want to see these for yourself, these videos are all available on the channel. So in terms of trail riding, this is a hardtail with capabilities above its price tag. This is a bike that you can feel confident on when trying new things and taking on challenges. So speaking of challenges, how hard wearing is this bike? Well, I've tested this too. I would love to blame the bike for my crashes somehow, but unfortunately these were down to human error. This bike has proved to be hard wearing and despite my heavy use, it's taken very little damage. Just a couple of cosmetic scratches really, which is pretty impressive. So the ride quality, reliability and value for money are all positives. But are there any bad points? So I've told you the reasons why I like riding this bike, but it's also important to focus on the things that I don't like. And to be honest, there's just one which is this. As you can see, the cables have been rubbing 
on the top of the forks and I've actually chipped the paint and worn the metal away a bit. Of course, this is slowly worn away over time as I've been turning the bars. Luckily, it's an easy fix. And yes, I should have done it way sooner. So that fix looks as good as any. You can get things, of course, that wrap around the cables instead of going on the frame like these little see-through pads, but this looks like a, a good fix for now. Let's just see how it goes. But apart from this issue, I really haven't had any problems with this bike at all. Of course, some people have huge preferences about upgrading their wheels or suspension, which can make any bike more enjoyable to ride, as I'm sure they would with this one. But my point is that you don't need to do any of these things to have a great time on this bike. It's just fun right out of the box. So this was my one year review of the Voodoo Bazango Pro. For the price, I think this bike is very hard to beat. If you've got one or you've ridden this bike, it would be great to hear your thoughts and opinions, so put them down in the comments. Until next time, thanks for watching today, I'll see you again. Oh, 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 oh